very belated guidelines on school closures after basically everyone had made the decision, it still remains a very vexed issue. Here to talk about what's the best policy and how to deal with fallout, Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federations of Teachers, and Dr. Joseph Fair, a virologist and epidemiologist. Doctor, let me start with you just on the, the epidemiology side of this. Like, what are the pro and con cases for closing schools? You know, as you said, this is a very divided issue, even amongst ourselves as public health professionals. I've, talked to, I've actually talked to yeah. epidemiologists on either side of this. Yeah. Interestingly, there's been a lot of consensus on a lot of issues. Yeah. This one splits people. For me, I tend to be on the side of let's close the schools because, you know, even it, we know kids are not dying from the disease, from the data at least that we have, but they are getting infected and they are infectious. So they can infect other kids who will then take it home to their high-risk grandparents or their high-risk parents in those high-risk categories. Children are notorious super spreaders of germs of all sorts. So this I got germ three is and be, I know it. <laughs> yeah, right? So... This is no different from that. And so I tend to lean in the corner of we need to close the schools. Make, make the argument sense. on the other side. What, what, what is an epidemiological argument on the other side? On the other side of closing the schools? Of keeping them open, keeping basically. Them open. Oh, keeping them open. Well, unless you close them all at the same time, then we're going to just be in a cycle of one school getting it, the other school getting it two weeks later, the right. other school going to get it three weeks later, et cetera. So it has to be all or none. Where is your union on this? So... We are in the middle of that agonizing debate amongst ourselves. I imagine you're torn. Yeah, no, we're totally torn. But so at the beginning of this, this last two weeks, we were like, this is a last resort. This is a last resort. We got 2 million kids nationwide who are homeless. We have 31 million kids we feed every lunch, you know, 12 million we feed over breakfast, all the work we do in terms of health care. Half the kids in the country already come in with trauma. So... All of the things that Bill de Blasio and others are saying about the impacts, and particularly in terms of then what happens with parents and staying home, that was why it is the last resort. But this is why we are now leaning towards where the good doctor is and where the 36 epidemiologists who sent Bill de Blasio a letter this week said, because if you don't have the testing, you don't know who has the virus. And then you have kids and families that are kids going cross city, cross state, right. all this other stuff. And since you don't know where the vector is, you can be contaminating, contaminating. And so what we've tried to do, like we've worked in New Mexico, we've working with Illinois, we're working with Michigan, is how do you create feeding centers? How do you create online? How do you create childcare? So plan this, which is what New Mexico is doing all this weekend, what Michigan is doing all this weekend. So they're weekend. gonna, wait, so tell me about that. So they're, they're, they wanna try to square the circle here, which exactly. is we have kids who need school and depend on school to get fed, whose parents depend on us for, for watching their kids, essentially. Exactly. But we want to close the schools. So there's some middle space that they're working yes. towards. Yes. So, for example, huh. um, Governor Grisham in in New Mexico, give her lots of props, grab and go lunches, trying to figure out mm. with Presbyterian um, uh, Hospital or Health Association how to do some um, feeding programs there, how to do some child care programs there. Um, uh, Denver Public Schools, K through. Um, 18 have a feeding program. The USDA is going to pay for all these things. Um, the in LA, they're figuring out family resource centers, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So what's going to happen in New York if, God forbid, there's a cluster that all of a sudden shows up in the Bronx or shows up in Brooklyn, and then people are going to immediately say, "We got to close the right. school tomorrow." And you won't have the plan. And you haven't had I the see plan. Your point. So I see what your I'm point. saying is that your what you're seeing all across the country now, Ohio. Michigan, Illinois, people are spending all weekend long, people were spent from Thursday, Friday, all weekend trying to plan. And then you have the CDC that's now said, okay, you have to close for eight weeks. <laughs> Which, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, this is not a decision we take lightly to make these kind of recommendations, right? This impacts people in every facet of I life, mean, especially the low income it's, strata. Yeah, it's, it's so, agonizing. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is that, again, you get to the point, I mean, there's two points here, one on epidemiological and one then a sort of social safety net. The epidemiological point is, I remember talking to an epidemiologist a few weeks ago who, who made the point that if you don't scale up testing, 
you will result to blunter and blunter in instruments Absolutely. of social Correct. distancing. So you you actually, like, as opposed to the idea of, like, testing will cause panic, what you actually want to do is, like, see exactly where the virus is so that you don't have to do things like shut everything down. Exactly. But that's, yeah. that's where we are right now because we can't see it. And you just said the key word, social distancing. And unless everyone social distances, including children, it doesn't work. The other part of this, of course, we saw... Which so is what we saw in South Korea Absolutely. and in China. So the other, the other part of this from a sort of policy perspective, so we just, it looks like the president has just tweeted his approval. If you start, were with us at the beginning of the show, we were at a deal worked out between Pelosi and Mnuchin, uh, waiting for the thumbs up tweet from the president. We just got the thumbs up tweet, which means that will pass. Paid family sick leave, um, some emergency medical leave. Absolutely imperative. But part of the issue here, right, is that like, all of these policies are detached. So if Ohio closes the schools, like, Good luck, parents who have jobs. Well, but, like, like, unless we're well, doing everything possible. I know, but there's, I mean, you're totally right. <laughs> but what I want to give some props to Nancy Pelosi and Rosa Delora and all of them, because they have been listening to all of us in terms of how to get these policies kind of connected. In this process, you're in saying. In this process. Because the, if you look at their bill, we kept saying you have to increase SNAP, you have to deal with the public charge issues, you have to increase Medicaid, we have to do all this stuff because if we, if schools are closed, if parents have to stay right. home, they need that, that help right now and the enhanced unemployment right now. I think we have precedent for this too. I mean, you know, to give an analogy, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Sandy, now that we have declared a national emergency, FEMA has the power to issue direct funds to people to cover rent, food, and daycare, et cetera. So, that's doable now, presumably, if we have enough money put aside for that. Do you have, uh, I guess, final question, you know, there's a workplace aspect to this. You're, all your focus has been on the children and the families, which is good, but obviously you, yes. you're a union yes. uh, leader, and you have workers, and right. those workers are in workplaces. Right. And I, talked and I to total concurred with, I saw... Rich Shumka last, last night, who, who obviously there's real concerns there. Yes. I mean, that must be another part of this. Yes, I mean, your because, teachers are going to get but sick. It, but it's not just our teachers. We are the second largest nurse union. So this whole notion, if, if, and look, if I sound angry, I am. I'm not a scientist. I listen to the scientists. How the heck did we not have testing? How don't we have testing? How do we not have a stockpile of N95 respirators? Yes. Yeah. What happens to the ventilators? Yeah. And so what's, what's happening is everybody is scared. The, the fear has now overtaken the fact, but all of these kind of processes for safety need to be in place. Randy Weingarten and Dr. Joseph Fair, thank you both for making time. That is all in for